Hi everyone, I hope you all are doing well. Today, I want to share with you how to implement error propagation in Mule 4. Say, you have an app 1 which calls app 2 and for some use case, you want to return from app 1 the same error that occurred in app 2. Let's see how you can do that. Let's work with three scenarios. Scenario 1. App 1 sends a request to App 2. With one field in request body as success true. App receives the request and performs two checks. Request body is not empty. And value for success parameter in request is true. If both checks are successful, it returns a success response back to app 1 and app 1 returns a success response back to the user. In this scenario, it is a happy path. Now let's see what happens for a error scenario where we do not want to propagate the error that is returned from app 2 to the user. Scenario 2, app 1 sends a request to app 2 with success indicator as false. Now app 2 receives request, performs two checks, request payload is not empty, value for success parameter in request is true. In this case, check 2 fails. App 2 returns 422 error and App 1 returns 500 error back to the user. So, this is a default scenario where if any component in the Mule application fails, it returns a 500 error. Now let's see a scenario where we are propagating the exact error that is written by app 2. So in this scenario, app 1 sends a request to app 2 with empty request body. App 2 receives the request and performs its two checks. Request body is not empty and value for success parameter in request is true. In this case, check 1 fails. App 2 returns a 400 error back to App 1. Now, App 1 also returns the same 400 error back to user. Now, this is what we are calling error propagation, where the error that occurred in App 2 is propagated exactly back to the user by App 1. Now, how do we do that in MuleSoft? Let's check. Now we have two applications, app1 and app2. If we check app1, in app1 we are having a listener that listens to slash app1 and which calls app2 which is deployed in localhost 8082 app2. We have two error handlers and when we want to propagate an error 400 that would be HTTP bad request. So we are handling for that error and we are assigning error error message payload as the payload to be returned. That means we are extracting the error payload that is that has been returned by app 2 and sending that same as a, a response payload of app 1. And for variable HTTP status, we are fetching the status code of app2 from the error object in the path error, error message, attribute, status code. Now, this is set to HTTP status. Why we are setting this to HTTP status? Because we have configured our listener response to listen to the status code that is contained in the variable HTTP status. Now, if you see app 2, app 2 
receives request at 8082 app 2 and it do, does two checks. One check is to check that the payload is not empty. If it is empty, it returns this error. And the second check is to check that the payload.success is set to true. Now, in both cases, the error, the default error would be validation invalid boolean. But to uniquely identify which error occurred, we mapped it to uh, something that is un identifiable for us like app to empty payload in case the payload is empty and the second one is mapped to app to prerequisites failed to identify which error has occurred if both the validation passes then we get a success with the timestamp as the response now app to empty payload what is the payload that we are setting we are setting then we extracting the namespace and identifier from the error object which would be app to colon empty payload and we are setting the cost to be empty payload for app to prerequisite failed we are setting it as unprocessable entity and we are setting the cause as success indicator is false in both in this case we set 422 as a return type or error of this one and this one is set to 400 and here also you see it is set to http status because we have configured our listener to listen to the status that is setting this variable http status in this way we are um, configuring our two applications now we want to debug these two applications. How do we do that? We do select both the applications and then we select debug. Hello everyone. So my two application is deployed. Now I will uh, send my first request to app 1. We will have a payload which only one field success. And let's first try with the success scenario. We are sending a request. And if you see, we have received the payload success true. And we are getting the call in app 2. In app 2, we have received the same payload. First check is to check if this payload is empty, which is not uh, that's what oh, this is not empty so it is successful this checks if the success is equals to true which is also true so this check is successful and we are getting a return xml payload back to our application which says successful with a timestamp now let's try the second scenario was where we set the success indicator to false. The call to so app one has received the request with the payload success equals to false, and it goes to app uh, app two, and app two is doing the first check to check if the payload is not empty which is correct and the second check is to check if the success is set to true which is not in this case so it is failing because our payload is success equals to false now it goes to this handler a2 prerequisite failed it you you remember that we were mapping the invalid boolean error to app to prerequisite fail so this error is raised and we got this error payload dot success is false so this is an on error continue it would therefore it would just set this 500 http status and the payload error message back to app 1 as we are using the http status to see check the set the status code therefore it is uh, still setting 500 error so if you go here you will see 
we have a 500 error where our app2 resulted in a status code error of 422 and as 422 is not recognized so mule unknown error is being set and we are uh, getting a 500 data that is user is getting 500 from app1 now what we want to do is the third scenario where we give a empty payload and user should get back a 400 from app1 so first we go to app2 and we see that first check if payload is not empty so the first check payload is not empty fails because the payload is null and therefore it goes to 400 and it says a error message now call to app 2 this is the actual error we get an error bad request app 2 failed but we are setting it to the exact same error message that app 2 should return so you will see we record app to empty payload so this was the error that we were raising in app 2 exactly same result you get in app 1 so to verify here we will set the request to app 2 with empty payload and we will see what it returns Sorry, I forgot we are in debug mode. Right. So, we got app 2 empty payload. Exactly the same error that we got from app 1. So, this is how we are propagating the exact same error from one application to another application to the user. If we want to verify that it returns 422 for success field, we can see here we'll see we got 422 unprocessable entity as the error saying the success indicator is false from app 2 but when we send the same risk same request to app 1 from from app 1 to app 2 the propagation will not happen because we have not uh, created it like that so it will get a 500 error instead so you see we are returned with a 500 server error whereas app to return with 422 error now if we go into the code to see so we will see that for app 1 we are setting the payload from error message payload and the http status also from the error message status code that is the reason why we are getting the same error uh, propagated but from here we can see we are not doing so we are overriding it with a error structure for the user for any error error propagation can also be done for um, as i said by setting the success uh, validator here so that we we are we can get the attribute and payload directly from the payload mule message but if it is done from here we have to extract it from the error object of uh, mule that's it guys please like and share if you like this video subscribe to my channel for more such contents don't forget to comment down below happy learning